Hey guys, so today I've got five very useful tips or tricks for Affinity Photo version 2 and I do hope they will improve your workflow when using this great software. So let's get started. Here we are in Affinity Photo for desktop. Works exactly the same on the iPad and my first tip is actually a tool that people tend to forget about but it's really handy. I'm talking about the Blenish Removal tool which is over here in this group together with other healing tools. Let's enlarge that, there we go. In this case the tool is semi-automatic so we don't need to worry about stamping or sourcing the stamp or colour picking or merging or anything like that. Of course it's a destructive tool so it changes the pixel on the layer permanently. So make a copy before you start. But for small fixes it's perfect. So take a look. We can adjust the size of the tool from this slider at the top. Now I've got that selected. There's the slider at the top. Now I've got it set to 50 pixels so you can go way up. But make sure you don't make it too big if you're just removing spots. So I've got it set to 50 pixels. And then once you've got that set, if you have a texture that you want to clean up, you just click on the element and then pull it out in the direction of the texture you like. If they're small spots, you can just click on it. This way the new sample will replace the dirty element. Now let me show you that. I'll turn that one off and that one on. There we go. Now it's a bit hard to see where that you can see I'm moving the dot around there. I've set that over on the left, the healing tool. You can clean up the texture in this using this handy tool very quickly. Don't forget to adjust the size to match the damage. Don't use too big a brush on it. Now I've got some little dots over here on the right hand side slightly. What I might do is enlarge this and you can see we've got some dots here. Now I'm still set to fix 50 pixels. There's the right in the center of the screen. You can see it moving. Just click on that and it's gone. Click on that and it's gone. Click on that and it's gone and so forth. If they, if they were spots on your lens, dust on your lens, now that looks like it's quite a big circle but remember this image is quite enlarged. There's the little spots gone. You can see where the you can just see the pinkish circle appear there when I clip the button. And that's getting rid of those little dots. If you want to get rid of larger stuff, use a different tool. Alright, you don't need to work only with this tool when you've got walls or dirt on the lens or stuff like that. You can actually use this during your retouching process like in your portraits. So we've got our background there. Let's go back to normal size and I'll go to stock. Let's try and look for an image with somebody with freckles. And there's one there. So let's just drag that in. Now we'll enlarge that again. One, two. And you can see the freckles there. Now I don't want to sm smudge this out too much so I'll drop that down to 30 pixels. Just make sure I've got that selected. Now you can see that. And you can see right towards the center there, just below the girl's left eye. Oh, I just removed a few freckles there. There's one over just there. You can see that there. There we go. Now, you've got to be very careful removing freckles or spots and things from people's faces. Pimples and things like that, of course, you can get rid of. If you have a face with little pimples or something like that, you can use this tool for that as well. As you can see, it nicely melts and adjusts the texture. 
so it can even be used on a human face. It's a very good tool to use with other healing tools here in this group. You've got the patch tool and also the in-painting brush tool in addition to the one I mentioned today, the blemish removal tool. So just simply adjust the size of the tip, click on the damaged area and drag to the direction of the undamaged area and that's it. Now, demonstrating that, there's that one there, just click on that and drag it to that undamaged area. But for small patches like that, you can just simply tap on the patch. But you can see where the freckle is and just below it to the right is the undamaged area. That cleans it up nicely and it's only a 30 pixel um, brush. Now let's go down just below there on her jawline. There's one there, there's one there. Let's drag that down a little bit. There's one there. Drag that down a little bit. One there. Drag it up a little bit. You can see that's cleaned up, shall we say, or removed some of the more obvious freckles. Now this person has got a lot of freckles. Now that defines her character. So you can't uh, remove all of those freckles without actually changing the image of the girl. So be careful with that. Now, let me reduce that in size. There we go. Go back to layers. Drag that one down where it belongs. Now I'll turn that one off. Turn that one on. Turn the background off and turn that off. Now we've just got that. The second tip for today I've got for you is simply to save your history in your document. And there we are, look at that, there's the history. The great thing about working with raster editors is that we can always go back in history and redo part of the project if we want to. If you make multiple mistakes, or you simply want to redesign something, you can go back to the history panel and see all of our changes, everything we did so far in this project. I can click on any state I want, and I can also use this handy slider at the top. So take a look. All the edits are back on this wall. All right, we can move through the history panel, but if I open this document, my history will be gone. Now there's the slider there, and you can see it's moved right back through. You can see the history list is moving there. Or if you like, you can simply, one at a time, move through the history list. And that's where I was changing, and we're back on that. See, we're right at the bottom there, because it lists the, it goes down the list like that, not up the list. They don't appear at the top, they appear at the bottom. Now, you want to stick that history with this document. You want to be able to save it with this document. To do that, simply go to File, and you can see there, I've got Save History with Document. You can untick that, and when you save it, it won't save the history. But if you want to, if you want to save it, go to File, and tick on Save History with Document. Now it gives you a warning. Enabling Save with History means that anybody you send this document to can see everything you did to create it. Do you still want to enable Save with History? Well, in this case, yes. So now when you save the document, File, Save. Now you don't have to tick that again. It's, it's, a, it's a toggle. It's already on. So you just save that and it's saving the document with all the history I've got in it. So when you come back to open that document, everything you did in that document will still be there. Every time you reopen the document, you'll see all your history, all the steps you took until this point. It's very handy. 
because we can always go back even after we reopen the document. But you must be careful in case you're sending this to other people. They'll also see your history, so keep that in mind. All right, use this function wisely. Now, let's move to tip number three, which is mask to below. It's very handy. Take a look. I'll put a shape here on the layer above. Just let me hop out of that for a moment. And I'll go to there. Now I want the cloud tool. You can see I've got the circle there. I've got to select the layer I want, which is the one with all the flowers on. And I'll drag out, hold the shift key down so it's a perfect shape at this stage. And I've centered it on that document. Right click on the layer. You've got the layer selected. Right click on the layer and select mask to below. And now my image is below the shape is kind of trapped inside this shape, so it's masked. I can move the whole image, or I can move only the shape. There's the shape moving, moving along the red line, which makes up the image. You can see if I get right to the edge, there's the edge of the image. So let's put that back in the center, so we know exactly where it is. I can click on the whole layer, and move the whole layer. So you can put that anywhere in your document. Let me center that again. Fairly hard to center. I can even rotate it. There we go, flowers on their side. Isn't that lovely? Alt Z just moves that back to where it was. Or Command Z, I should say, Command Z. Or I can click on the white mask and I'll be rotating only the mask, which looks pretty much the same in this case. Can I get that to zero? Oh, very sensitive mouse there. There we go, right on zero. So, and you can also do that, remember, with your transform. Setting that to zero, zero, etc., etc. Okay. We're back on there. Now. I've clicked on that. You can put shapes, text, or nearly anything you like in there and simply click Mask to Below. So let me show you that. I'll take that off. We'll put some text in there. I want the Artistic Text Tool. There we go. I'll change it to a much bigger, there we go, Alpha Slab. Put that in the center, nicely in the center. Go over to the layer and click on Mask to Below. There's the flowers inside your text. How cool is that? That was our tip number three. Tip number four is all about blur. Now, let's adjust that slightly. We'll turn that one off and turn that one on. There we go. We've got a girl there. Now, this tip is tip number four, and it's all about blur. So, take a look. We have a picture here, and now I'll select filters. Up the top, filters. Select, oh, select blur, and then select depth of field blur. If you select that, you'll see that you may recognize something you may recognize from your camera or a mobile app even. Lots of them have this. And there's 
a context toolbar there. This will blur the background and we can adjust the radius here with this nice little pop-up box. Take a look at the background. We can blur it using the slider. Now, that background is slowly blurring, believe it or not, you can see that. Now, I've taken it right up to 100%. Now, we've got some of the girl in there. We can modify the shape. Doesn't need to be a perfect circle. But let's move it slightly because there's the image we want. Or if you like, you want to get the rest of the girl in there, we can modify the shape of that circle to almost any shape you like. Now it's gone off the top of the image and that's okay. Now we can bring that out slightly. Now that's better. Mask them and merge them together. We don't need to make it duplicates of the same image with different blurs and mask them and merge them together and stuff like that. Very handy, right? Now don't forget, if you want that to stay, you've got to go down here to the bottom right on this, well where I've got this, depth of field, and click apply. Otherwise, it'll go away. Now what I need next is another stock image. I'll look for city. Two, two. Okay, what we want is a nice picture of a city with cars in it. Oh, there's a picture of city. Now we'll go back to layers. I'll turn off the bottom layer and we've got that one there. Let's just drag it right out so it fills the, fills the canvas. And we've got that one. Now make sure the layer you're working on is selected. Now we have the same, same tool. It's called Tilt Shift. So it's not a portrait here. We've got a city and we will apply exactly the same filter. So Filters, Blur, and Depth of Field Blur. And you think, well, we've got a circle there. It's not the, the, This elliptical one is good for portraits, but not really for something like a city. So we can modify this. We can change the mode to Tilt Shift. See, we've got a field of view here, and we've got a mode elliptical and tilt shift will put the lines in there much better. It's a very quick way to make a tilt shift blur on your image without having duplicates of the same image and merging them together, blah, 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 and stuff like that, all in one filter. Very good. So let's see what happens when we put some, some blur in that. Now you can see how 100% blur, which you may not want, but in this case I've got, has blurred that out, but you can get hold of the line and you can tilt shift. You can see where the blur is applying there now. Now you may want a bit more of that line, so you go down like that. And that's got the focus fairly on that crossing. But if you want, we can put the focus just on just on that building, lining the lines up there with the sides of the buildings. Drag that out there, line it up with that one. And there we go. So the building is buildings on the sides are focused out and your attention is drawn down there all in one filter. Isn't that lovely? Now don't forget, apply that. Make sure it's still on there, of course. Now what I'm going to do is, for the next and final one, I want an image of 
a flower because we're going to make a flower brush. And that one there is perfect for what we want to do. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? What a pretty flower. Let's go back to layers. Yes, we know it's a photo by Bessie. And it's very good. As you may know already, you can simply click here in your brushes panel and then you can create new brushes. Where's my brushes panel? Brushes panel, there we go. You can create a new image brush this way and that's what we're going to do. Normally you would be asked to load an image from your computer, but there's one more thing I want to show you. So if you want to go in there, you can create a, a brush from an image new image brush etc etc now we don't but we don't want to do that we can do this without uh, loading an outside image so let's select the flower here using the quick selection tool which is over here that's that one selection brush you can see right on the left hand toolbar selection brush and there's our, I didn't adjust anything on that. I'm just using the quick selection tool. And there's a little bit in there and there's a little bit in there. Okay, let's, let's um, reduce the size of that to 40. Make sure it's reasonably well selected. There we go. Okay, now you can be as fiddly with that as you like, and you should be. You should really take care. Now head for brushes and click here at the corner and click New from Selection. Oops, there's one thing I forgot to do. You can see new brushes from selection isn't highlight. So what we've got to do is go back here to the layers, select the flower, right click on that layer and rasterize the layer. Now that layer is rasterized. You can see the shape here. Now we go to brushes. It's still selected, mind you. Go to there. And there we have it there. Right hand side, new brush from selection. There we go. Now there's the brush there. Isn't that lovely? Now we'll go up here to selections and deselect everything because we've done what that selection made there. We've got that brush there. Select the brush tool, paint brush tool. And there's a flower. Look at that but it's very large. Well, we could put it in there if you want to. There it is there. But what we'll do is go up here and reduce the size of it so it's 100 pixels. There we go. Lots of little flowers everywhere. So you've now got a brush made up of the flower that she selected. Isn't that clever? You can adjust the size of the tool using the slider, or you can also adjust the size of the brush by simply using square brackets on the keyboard. We can use it very quickly. If you need to adjust the properties of the brush, you can click the small button at the top. You can make the brush dynamic, and this way you can save it for later with all the properties you modify. So that's nice. Well, let's go back to layers. I hope these five tips will help you out with your Affinity Photo workflow. Don't forget them. Put them on sticky notes around your desk. Keep in mind, I post a couple of tutorials like this every now and then about Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. 
So if you're interested in these programs, please follow me here on YouTube and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.